Hello, this is Jeff Lackey, CEO of JKL Advisors, welcoming you to the podcast, Growing Your Business with People, a podcast where business leaders can learn how to win the war for talent by learning how to attract and retain great people. I'll be asking these business executives and thought leaders the tough questions in search of detailed and prescriptive solutions that you can use today. Hey, welcome today. This is Jeff Lackey, and I would like to invite Amit Parmer. He's the co-founder and CEO of Clickify. Amit has experience with uh, Unisys, IBM, Thermo Fisher, J&J. Clickify is an employer brand storytelling platform for hiring teams. It enables your recruiters, hiring leaders, and employees to use their social media to attract talent who will resonate with their purpose and reflect their values. Welcome to the show, Amit. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm excited to be here. Uh, we're thrilled to have you. So, I mean, listen, we all know that social media is not a nice to have for recruiting anymore. It's become a staple of any solid strategy. I'm not sure if most CEOs are aware of this out there because this is a show for CEOs helping to translate uh, the, the the TA speak to uh, to business leaders, but I'm not sure if they know that social media can increase candidate applications by 30 to 50 percent, according to a white paper uh, that was uh, that was produced by ISIMS. And if recruiters are looking for a candidate's online presence and and trying to use those professional networks, they will get a much better understanding of the person as well. So. Talk to us a little bit uh, about uh, about social media and more specifically, uh, tell us a little bit more about Clickify. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you know, you pointed out that study and it's so vital these days in the noise that we all live in. Uh, you know, we all know, you know, you get hit up uh, in an email uh, with maybe five jobs a day, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Uh, very transactional. Um Look, job boards have a place, no doubt, uh, but social media takes recruiting the quality of hire to the next level. And we've seen studies around this, as you mentioned, um, you know, 85% of candidates, and there's a LinkedIn study uh, last year, I believe, 85% of candidates find find their next job through social media, including LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I guess, you know, is kind of uh, on the fence social media platform, right? Um the, the others are, you know, the other 15% are, are finding their jobs elsewhere. You know, slowly, we believe uh, almost 100% of candidates will, will start to find their next career on social media channels. And that's a great point right there. The fact is candidates, 85 to 90% of all candidates will ha- find their next opportunity through networking, whether it's so- social channels, uh, through uh, connections they had, maybe your current employees. Yeah, you know, that's how they're going to find the job, right? Yeah, and you know, honestly, that's how it always kind of has been, right? Uh, you know, we we know even before the the age of social media, uh, people people always picked up the phone and said, "Hey, do you know do, do you know Jeff over there?" Right, <laughs> right. Uh, and, and that's how you know humans are meant to network. Uh, that's in our DNA, and we just are doing it at scale now. And frankly, that's at the root of why we built Clickify was was how do you help content be at the center of storytelling so that your recruiters, employees, and hiring managers can actually attract candidates well beyond your career site. Right? So that's that, that was kind of the genesis of Clickify, Jeff. That sounds perfect. I, I'm telling you right now, there's a uh, there's a lot in what you just said right now. So as you think about social media campaigns. Uh, and as you think about what makes them great, one of the things that I've noticed is that you need to be able to talk about your purpose and your values, right? And connect the people to the culture that you're promoting, right? So what is the company's purpose? What is it, you know, what's it trying to achieve? You know, things like how do your employees contribute to the vision and purpose and and what do you currently, you know, what do current employees recognize about the purpose and the aspiration that resonates with them? Yeah, it's so, so vital and important. Um, just the ability for you to connect with individuals uh, beyond the job description, 
today right. uh, is is super critical. Uh, I mean, let's take us for example, right? Like Jeff, I follow your content. I, I love your content, and and there's a connection that we've built uh, just based on the content that you share, right? And and similarly, uh, if we if we started to do that. You know, without a whole lot of corporate jargon, just human to human interaction with with content uh, that they believe in, that your employees have to believe in your vision, your mission, and your values. And, yeah. and once you do that, uh, then they will advocate for you, and and frankly, be magnets for amazing talent such as themselves uh, that are in the company today. I mean, think about it. What better talent acquisition strategy could you possibly have? than to have your best, your most aligned, your highest performing people sharing their experiences and and sharing potential openings or current openings using social media so that they can recruit others who are likely to also be high performers, who are likely also to resonate with your purpose, and who are also likely to reflect your values. I mean, it... If you're a leader, it doesn't get any better than that, right? In my mind, that's your number. Your your referral program is the number one place that you can get strong candidates, but also, and people forget about this, diversity is strongest in your diver, in your referral program. Now, some people say things like, "Well, the referral program are likely to just hire people like them." Well, it depends on how you structure those things, right? If you are, if you're creating a, a referral program and engaging with your diverse talent, right? Then yes, you're going to get more diversity within your organization and you can drive the diversity of your organization through social media because that is a much more trusted um, vehicle to hear from your employees as opposed to hearing from, you know, the the corporate. Oh, absolutely. There's a huge shift, uh, Jeff. To your point, uh, Edelman uh, Edelman just you know they they release a study every year really on the trust barometer in institutions and and generally speaking, uh, around the world, the trust barometer in in in, in institutions is dropping uh, year over year, uh, and that is directly related to how people want to hear from other people uh, within the organization versus it's a, it could be the same piece of content, but if, it, if I share it versus my corporation, I'm seeing uh, at least on our platform, because we actually analyze this data, we're seeing about 11 X more engagement of the same piece of content when a human shares it versus the company. 11 X more engagement. If a human an employee, a hiring leader, a recruiter, uh, maybe one of the potential peers of this job, if they share it, they're going to get 11 times more views than somebody, than a corporation just publicizing it out there. Now, we're not telling you corporations to stop publishing it, right? right? But what we are saying is saying, well, if you want 11x return on that investment, find a way to get your most engaged your top performing employees behind this stuff and and maybe make it a little fun. I mean, who says that recruiting can't be fun, right? Have a little competition, do some raffle, you know, do things that allow you to say, hey, who are our top referrers this month? It it's really not, it's not rocket science, but it could be one of the biggest impacts you have. Oh, absolutely. And, and to your point, you know, if and it's also it's a good indicator of the health of your organization as well, right? I mean, of course, you have engagement surveys; uh, they're amazing, you know, tools to have in your toolkit. But I always viewed referral percentages or referral rates as a good indicator of how the people internally are feeling about the organization as well. That's right. Um, and of course, the higher that rate. Uh, that means people are actually people within your organization are going out of their way to to get other people to join the organization. They're kind of frankly putting their name, uh, their social capital at risk by doing that, right? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. And and, and when they right. do that, when they do that, that actually shows 
to the CEO or the leadership or the CHRO that, hey, these folks are, are, are super, super excited about being here. They're involved. They're engaged. And, and ultimately, those are the people uh, you want to make sure that you care and feed for as well. I mean, there's so many studies out there. And if you're a CEO, you might not have ever seen this because you're not in the talent acquisition space. But I'll tell you, for two decades now, there's been research after research after research says that employee referrals are the highest performing. They have the highest retention. They have the highest promotion, promotability. They tend to be higher, uh, better diverse talent, right? And, and oh, by the way, there's this, there's this uh, ecosystem that they live in because the people who referred them are more likely to feel engaged they are, it drives improved engagement. It drives improved performance from the referrer, not just out of the referee. Uh, so the fact is, is that like, it's a whole system of, of virtuous uh, benefit that is happening with a referral, but you have to get the, the ref, you have to get your employees engaged in the process of of referring people that they know that are on the, in, the, in the industry and they might not even be thinking about it. That's not their full-time job to think about who is in the referral network. So how do you, how do you stoke the fires to get people to think about who's in my network so that I could go out and get an 11 X return on investment for my social media and for my, uh, for my job posting. Yeah, I mean the way we look at it is you you let the algorithms of the of the powers to be and the social channels kind of take care of that. But at the at the same time, it has to be content driven. So the more content that you share that's relevant to your network, the higher the return on engaging with your network just by the virtue of the the algorithms. Um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Insta, and now TikTok, right? Um, and that's, so that's at the core, like content, you know, just like content is so critical for marketing functions. Uh, it is, it is super critical for talent attraction as well. And oftentimes, right, Jeff, uh, you know, we've experienced, there's, there's always kind of this, this, uh, you know, budget, you know, dialogue around, you know, Hey, marketing function, you're, you're measured on how many set, you know, qualified sales leads you bring to my sales organization. Uh, but I have yet to see marketing functions get measured on uh, how many qualified candidate leads they're helping bring in, into the organization as well. This podcast is brought to you by Paradox AI, also known as Olivia, recruiting's most advanced AI assistant. I used Paradox at my previous organization, and their team helped us create a candidate concierge experience that ensured a fast hiring process that still felt very human. We literally hired hundreds of thousands of people, many of whom were critical healthcare workers needed during the pandemic. She would let them know we had an interview or offer waiting and would help them navigate onboarding processes. Olivia made the experience easy and fast, two essential ingredients in recruiting great people. It's not just me. Organizations like McDonald's, General Motors, Unilever, and L'Oreal Use this technology to create engaging and fast candidate experiences. Go to Paradox.ai to learn more about the amazing things Paradox and Olivia can do for you. I'm going to bring up a point that I bring up almost every podcast. So this is a, I'm going to ask, as CEO, I guarantee you that you know who your top salesperson is. Absolutely. Do you actually know who your top re recruiter is? Do you know your number one recruiter and why? And then second, do you know your ta top talent magnet, that leader out there who just tends to get way more than their fair share of the best and the brightest out there in the marketplace? But but as CEO, like, aren't you thinking like, like who is the person? And then how would I recognize that person? Because as CEO... You know that one of the biggest things that, that allows you to grow, the enabler or potentially inhibitor, is your talent, your ability to attract and hire great people. Yeah. So absolutely. if you can hire and, and attract great people, then you can grow. If you're unable to do that, if you're, you're struggling with that, then that's going to limit your growth. 
and 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 you're probably pulling out all the stops and if not pulling out your own hair to try and figure out how to do that. You know, I'll point another study. I think this was Corn Ferry a couple of years ago, and it's still a valid study. They they uh, they done research and they they've said by the year 2030. So this is about next eight years. Uh, there's going to be a three trillion dollar revenue shortage across the world because of lack of talent. Um, and and the skills needed to uh, to 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 drive revenue, right? You know, it has to do, of course, with with the birth rates dropping around the world, uh, immigration policies in some countries, as yes. as countries around the world get more introverted, so to speak, and, and of course, just frankly, just uh, how the education systems uh, are are getting expensive by the day, right, around the world, <laughs> right? And those are all these drivers, right, Jeff? Um, these are all the drivers that are, it's like a perfect storm from a talent crunch standpoint uh, that we're going to see at least over the next eight years is what they're predicting, maybe even longer. Uh, so, and it's not, you know, uh, it has nothing to do with, you know, how bad or good the economy is, believe, believe it or not. You know, we've seen this in 2008, right? At, even at 8% unemployment in the U.S., you still had 92 out of 100 people. Uh, who are completely poachable from other companies, <laughs> right? That's the worst. Of, that's one of the highest unemployment rates that we outside of COVID, right? That's one of the highest unemployment rates we've seen. And we still had 92 out of 100 people fully and gainfully employed. That's yeah. that's a that's a big deal because then you, you say, we're, you know, are we going to fish from the barrel of the 8%? Of course we should, but but we also need to, we need to find an attraction strategy that's going to get people to leave from the 92%. And that means that we have to have a really compelling story. This isn't just put out the help wanted sign and hope that somebody comes because that's not going to do it with the 92%. My biggest pet peeve is is when, I, when I'm driving down the road and I see, you know, hiring now signs. <laughs> right, right. Like, no kidding, really? <laughs> it, it, you know, it's uh, it's like general marketing, it's, misses the mark, the return on that is super low. We've actually done uh, a study on this where on average, not, uh, collectively, annually, we did about the last 12 years worth of data on this, Jeff. And this is Clickify. We have data on this spreadsheets behind the scenes. Uh, $2.9 billion dollars every year collectively in the US are spent on digital job ads, right? That includes Indeed, ZipRecruiter, uh, LinkedIn even, right? Uh, you venture to guess, Jeff, what percent of candidates actually respond to that $2.9 billion of spend? Tell me. It's, it's 7%. 7%, 7 is the number. Okay. 93% of candidates in the $2.9 billion dollars that are spent on advertisement are not even responding to it. You're lucky at that point in time. So in one in one sense, you're saying I could get 11x return on investment if I really plug my people into doing this, right? Doing this work and engaging in social media. Or I can get the five to seven percent you know, response rate. And who and chances are that five to seven percent is not the cream of the crop. Right. That may you might get some of the cream of the crop in there, but the chances are you and and oh, by the way, are your recruiters even able to handle the volume of the people that come in through the five to seven percent? Because if you even got a great candidate, would they have the the bandwidth and the capability to be able to find that person? Oh, that's yeah. another. Yeah, that's another issue. Right. Um, is is the the the, the noise that, that gets created in the system through these ads also, right? Because a lot of it is what I call programmatic, right? In our world, Jeff. Right. Um, you're, yeah, that there's a capacity issue that you inevitably, inevitably run into. And, you know, you, you think about the quality, right? Like, uh, you know, I am, I'd rather talk to a candidate who, who has been, you know, following my content, is commenting on my content, the content yeah. resonates with that candidate over, let's say a three month period, Right. And then when I have a job open, I'd rather pick up that phone or, or even a LinkedIn message, right? Uh, or a Twitter message and say, Hey, Jeff, I, I know, I know we've been talking. Have you been following my content? 
hey, I have this, I have this job open or this, this career opportunity for you. I'd love to get your thoughts on it, right? And that's so much more powerful than seeing something pop up you know, in your inbox that is from a random individual or company that you had nothing to do with it. The noise is like a million decibels. It is overwhelming to our candidates and nobody, they don't want to be overwhelmed anymore. They want to have, they want to hear about the things that are relevant to them from trusted individuals who, who likely know who they are and what they're about and what would be interesting and what would not, and be able to say, hey, I'm only gonna get the stuff that really matters, right? Why would you not? And as a CEO, like the one thing I tell you is that driving the top of the funnel is a dangerous mission because each and every one of those candidates is likely somehow or another a buying customer of yours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which you might may or may not know, depending on the study, between 40 and 80 percent of candidates who have a poor candidate experience are likely to leave the brand. So wow. think about that for just a moment. You have an online purchasing, you know, you're a retailer or you're a healthcare, and you you give them a poor candidate experience. They may abandon your brand. All together, huh? Wow. All that's, together. Yeah, I mean that's that's direct, you know, top line top line issue for, for CEOs, right? Like how do you how do you manage your your, your brand presence and, and the reputation, right? Um, for sure. The experience that you give to your, your candidates uh, who could potentially or, or are your current customers, right? Bad advertising agency is entering our hundredth year of business. From day one, we have specialized in recruitment advertising, and today, we develop fully digital strategies across programmatic advertising, search engine marketing, and social media. With 100 years of experience and knowledge across every industry, we're ready to help our clients navigate what's next. To learn more, visit us at badad.com. So let's do it just a second here. You're a tech leader. You're right in the middle of the innovation. As you look at the TA and HR space today, and remember, this, the audience is a CEO, CEO, right? What would you tell them the innovations that they should be looking at within that space? You know, what, what are the top innovations? And, and really, why should they care? Why should they care? I mean, I think we've established it helps growth. It helps EBITDA. But how do these particular innovations, how would they help those leaders? Yeah, a great, great question. I think, you know, we're at an interesting point in our lives and careers as well, and, and as functions. Um, you know, automation, of course, right? Every CEO is uh, knows about it, hears about it. Uh, many are probably embarking on a, on a major automation transformation, you know, initial uh, uh, I, I think automation is here to stay. I think it's only going to get more uh, sophisticated in terms of the work that AI slash machine learning, and I just kind of bundle it all into automation, really. Well, because machine learning and, and AI is getting advanced to the place where, where it's augmented intelligence, but in many cases, and the vast majority that I've seen, automation is just about the most, it has some of the biggest significant impact outside of maybe conversational AI, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. is there a particular automation organization out there that you think, you know, or a few of them that you think especially highly of? Yeah, you know, the, the one, you know, from a from a general, what I call business standpoint, business transformation, really um, the one that sticks out is Automation Anywhere, uh, based out of San Francisco. You know, they, they have a very interesting proposition uh, for CEOs where, you know, they're really looking at every little process across your functions, right? Not just within HR or, uh, or so on. Um, they're really looking at it and, and uh, giving you automation, you know, opportunities. Uh, if I if I focus on just the HR function, um, the one that really stands out to me as I'm, you know, going across and, and talking to several of my colleagues in the industry from an HR tech standpoint is Paradox AI. Right. Um, they're really sophisticated in terms of, you know, how you take the more mundane tasks that frankly, nobody wants to do Jeff, right? Like, let's face it, right. Nobody wants to schedule interviews or go back and forth with candidates. Right. 
and nobody wants to have recruiters working at two and three o'clock in the morning answering uh answering questions that they're gonna that could be answered by a uh, that by an ai driven chat bot right yeah. uh or enabling them to reset their password or or just helping them find a job right instead yeah. of talking to a human these chat bots that are created by paradox for example are, are amazing but beyond that i was really super impressed with uh just recently they uh they launched this uh mick hire right mm-hmm. where you can you can literally apply online through alexa by talking to your machine and and paradox is the uh, intelligence engine behind all that right? and, and you think about it like talk about removing barriers from the recruitment and application process that's what you're trying to do here is you're trying to make it fewer barriers and allow your best talent to get to the hiring stage as fast as possible and and uh and between automation automation anywhere paradox some of their really strong innovations uh the, i think those are two terrific examples uh of where ta organizations are starting to and, and and continue to you know advance their function as a ceo when you're thinking about you know constantly under budget pressures right so you you always are going to be asked to do more with less um and and I think we're at a, a juncture where you know we're in a fortunate time where you actually have some of these technological advances to be able to say yeah you know what we can actually do more with less <laughs> right, right. 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 Uh, while while not compromising candidate experience or talent experience right so because it was always historically it was always kind of uh, you know it was an either or like hey if I if I reduce the cost here, uh, you know, you're going to do it at the expense of somebody's experience, right? Uh, I, I believe, I, I strongly believe that with with these technological advances, uh, I think it's it's a nice medium where you can you can actually drive efficiencies in your operations while also increasing, not just keeping it steady, but increasing your experience with um, with, with candidates as well as employees. Well, because really this technology should be augmenting the capability for you to have a more human to human experience. Currently, recruiters spend 80% of their day on administrative tasks or more, right? If we actually, if we took them and made that more like 80% in human to human tasks, right? Then that makes the relationship, putting the relationship back into recruiting and getting the administration out and give it to the bots, give it to the, uh, you know, to the auto, you know, give it to the automation experts and let them take care of it and let them and drive your processes to be more efficient and get rid of the, the non-value added, uh, you know, stage steps and stages. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, there's always this kind of as a CEO, right, there's always this question about, okay, I'm going to invest. I'm just making this number up, right? Uh, I'm going to invest a million dollars in this in this chatbot uh, or this automation software. Uh, where Where is the headcount that's going to pay for that, right? Inevitably, that's always kind of the question. And I would argue it's actually not that. It's how do you reskill and upskill the the talent uh, that is going to get their jobs are going to change right uh, so instead I would say hey you know if I had five recruiters doing that I would actually turn that around and say okay these five recruiters now uh, are we're gonna we're gonna put them in in coaching for workforce planning like coaching leaders how to assess talent right <laughs> like, right right, uh, right. So th- there's always kind of this you know, inevitably, there's always this question, okay, you know, if I'm going to invest X amount of dollars, are you going to get headcount cuts anyway? That is not the way to approach automation. Yeah, you should be saying to yourself, I have, say, let's pick a number in there, 500 open requisitions. How much are those 500 open recs costing me? And if the answer is zero, then cancel them all. That's right. Shut them all down now. If you, a CEO, cannot find how you, you know, how those 500 or however many open positions you have open, how they translate to your capability and growth, shut them down. But if you look at it and say, you know, those are costing me, you know, $20 million, 30 or 40, $100 million worth of EBITDA this year. 
if I had those working right now instead of just sitting on a job board somewhere, then then you got to say, at what what is my investment to be able to capture the EBITDA that I'm going after? That is the trend. You have to flip the problem on your on its head to go after something as an investment strategy. If you only look at it as a cost, you can drive cost to zero pr- quite quickly. You just strike the whole function and strike the capability. What you'll realize is that there's a price to be paid for. That. Oh, and it, there's a there's a big like long term price to be paid for that because I mean we all know right your your brand is is a huge asset that you know it takes it takes years to build but it takes two minutes to destroy. That's for sure. At what point in time would you not put a you know a million bucks in to get a twenty million dollar return on EBITDA? Absolutely. You'd do it all day long if it was a piece of machinery or equipment. Or something else, right? And that's the same way you should be. You should be challenging your TA and HR department to have the conversation at that level with you. But also, as the leader, you are the number one recruiter. You are the top person of this organization. You should be framing up these arguments as well, seeking the help and counsel of those individuals around you to be able to frame up and understand: Do we really need five hundred positions, right? What if we focused on these top 100 that create revenue growth and organizational growth as our priority, and then and then have as a fast follow some of the SGNA that'll support that? You're the CEO. You cut those things. You make it grow or shrink to the proportion that you think is right. I certainly, whenever I was the head of TA, I I made investments with that same type of thinking. Yeah, you know, what is my return on investment? What is my impact to the organization, its strategies, its growth? Or sometimes it's it's even uh, the people we were hiring were going to contribute to cost-cutting capabilities like automation or digital uh, marketplace. Not all of them are always top line. Sometimes they're yeah, bottom line. Top impact. Also, it's top and bottom, and they both have to be in sync, right, um, to, to basically go, you know, give the dollars back to the, st- the stakeholders and the shareholders, right? So. This podcast is brought to you by 7-Step, a leading global workforce solutions provider that offers recruitment process outsourcing, MSP services to manage the flexible workforce, including suppliers and contractors, and total talent solutions for managing the entire permanent and flexible workforce supply. Their people are great, and so is their technology, particularly their Surveo Insights data and intelligence platform. It's really cutting edge, not only in how it brings your talent data together, but in how it draws deep, detailed, predictive intelligence. It's really like a crystal ball for your talent data. I used 7-Step at my previous two organizations, and their team helped us to launch a full-service RPO to staff healthcare workers, customer service reps, IT professionals, data science and engineering, digital design teams, along with aerospace engineers and manufacturing workers. Their talent analytics put data at my fingertips, which allowed me to see around corners and strategically plan for frequent and volatile market changes, including a global pandemic where we had to hire literally hundreds of thousands of people. Their deep knowledge and exceptional integrity allowed me to rely on them as a trusted partner across multiple lines of business. Go to 7stepRPO.com to learn more about the powerful things 7step can do for you. So, so uh, you know, if there's any pieces of advice in it that you'd love to give to uh, your, your, your fellow CEOs, what would, you, what would you give them? You know, we touched on a, a lot of these topics today, Jeff. I, I would say, you know, the, the shortage of talent is here to stay, number one. Don't think this is like a, 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 a temporary issue. Uh, it's it's here to stay for a long time, given some of the factors. Uh, be be thinking about how do you invest really in in your talent function, the attraction to development, to you know how you even manage your exits, right? <laughs> like, right, right. Because uh, your brand is is a key asset that um, will will drive your future growth as well. Um, and and I think those are. From a talent standpoint, those are the the, the two things, uh, pieces of advice I would have. You know, from a business standpoint, 
uh, especially if you're in a knowledge-driven economy that we, we all are operating in uh, for the most part here, um, you know, just pay close attention to how your people are feeling uh, beyond surveys, right? And, 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 you know, the best CEOs I've seen and I've learned from, from several uh, are people who have a good pulse uh, at the ground level. And if you're able to do that at scale, uh, that that would that that certainly would go a long way in terms of building your brand with your people. Oh, that's that's sage words of advice, Amit. Sage words, and um, there's nothing more powerful than your than your existing teams to be able to recruit your next generation of teams. Absolutely. So leverage and use those people to their to their best capacity and you will uh you will see an organization that is uh that is prepped and ready to grow so thank you so much for today amit amit parmer the ceo and co-founder of clickify and a good friend of mine thank you so much for taking the time to to talk with us today and uh, i hope everybody got a tremendous uh you know amount of information out of today's uh message uh today i'd like to uh also, you know, let you know that, uh, you know, remember to click subscribe and, uh, and, and, and like our podcast, uh, because we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be hoping that maybe you share this with other CEOs out there and really excited to, to see this, uh, see this podcast grow. And, uh, and as we have more and more people like Amit and other business leaders out there who can share how do you go about growing your business with people? Thank you so much, Amit. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast, Growing Your Business with People, a podcast where you can get your MBA in TA for senior business leaders. Thank you.